Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Miss Linda. Today, we're going to read some of my favorite stories for beginning readers. Let's get started. Hair Love by Matthew A. Cherry Illustrated by Vashti Harrison My name is Zuri, and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. Daddy tells me it is beautiful. That makes me proud. I love that my hair lets me be me. In funky braids with beads, I am a princess. And when my hair is in two puffs, I am above the clouds like a superhero. My hair even does magic tricks. One day, Rocky and I were playing outside when along came the rain. From large to small it went. Presto! Just like that. There is nothing my hair can't do. Today, I woke up extra early all by myself. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. Daddy was still sleeping. Shh, I said to Rocky as we tiptoed past him. Lately, Daddy has been worn out. He makes me breakfast, takes me to school, goes to work, picks me up, and yesterday we went for a bike ride around the park. I think he needs a break. Because today is special, I want a perfect hairstyle. This calls for professional's touch. Paws off, Rocky! Crack! Daddy heard the crash. Zuri, what on earth? He asked. I was only trying to help, I said. Daddy smiled. Can I help too? It'll be a piece of cake, Zuzu. The first style was a big no way. The second was no better. No, Daddy. Then Daddy tried slicking my hair back into two puffs. Ouch! Daddy yelled. Wait a minute, Daddy said as he reached into the drawer and pulled out a pick. Ta-da! Daddy, really? I said. I'll be right back, he promised. Now, how's that? He asked, pulling a hat down over my eyes. Daddy, come on. We can do better than that. I really need my hair to be special. Don't worry, he said. We'll figure this out. Then I had a great idea. Daddy gathered all the tools we needed, and we were set. Watching carefully, Daddy combed, parted, oiled, and twisted. He nailed it. Funky puff buns. Pretty, pretty, and so much fun. Rocky approved, too. I put on my superhero cape as the final touch to a perfect look. Where's my Zuzu? Mommy called from the door. She could not get in the house fast enough. Mommy, you've got to be the prettiest supergirl I have ever seen, she said. And your hair is beautiful, Zuri. Who did it? I looked at Daddy and beamed. Mommy smiled. Very nice. Thank you. We learned from the best, Daddy said, as he gave her a big hug. My hair is Mommy, Daddy, and me. It's hair love. Flash, sunny day. A celebration of the Sesame Street theme song, and it features art from a variety of illustrators. Sunny day. Sweeping the clouds away. On my way. To where the air is sweet. Can you tell me how to get? How to get to Sesame Street? 
come and play. Everything's a-okay. Friendly neighbors there. That's where we meet. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? It's a magic carpet ride. Every door will open wide. To happy people like you. Happy people like you. What a beautiful sunny day. Sweeping the clouds away. On my way to where the air is sweet. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? How to get to Sesame Street? Max Explains Everything, Soccer Expert, by Stacy McAnulty, illustrated by Deborah Hawking. I know a lot about soccer. I've been playing it for a long time almost three weeks. Practice is fun, but game days are the best. You wear special shoes called cleats and a shirt with your lucky number. You know it's lucky because it's on your shirt and battle armor on your legs. I wish we got helmets and shields too. Max! Ready to get out there and kick that ball? Make sure you warm up before the game. Stretch, twirl, somersault. In the huddle, coach will tell you that winning is not important. Do your best, run fast, kick the ball, work as a team, have fun. The game starts when the ref blows the whistle. He's the guy in yellow, and he has a whistle. You should not bring your own whistle. Other stuff you should not bring to a soccer game? Crayons. A blanket, even if you just want to wear it as a cape. Your seashell collection, or dust bunny collection, or any collection, really. Sometimes there are dandelions and four-leaf clovers on the field. I pull these out so no one gets distracted. Kick the ball, Max! And sometimes there are ladybugs and worms. You should move these so they don't get hurt. I don't see any today. Get the ball, Max! Thousands of fans come to the games and they all take pictures. I like to give them different poses. Maybe one smiling and a serious one and one with my teammates. Let's take a picture of you kicking the ball. The clouds over the soccer field can be amazing. I've seen an alligator, a toothbrush and a diamond ring. Nothing today. Coach wants everyone to play, so sometimes you will sit on the side and cheer on your teammates. Cece, can you hear that bird chirping? Jose, I like your new haircut. Michael, look, there's a butterfly. Here, Max, eat an orange wedge. When you go back in the game, you must be ready for anything. Last week, a dog ran out on the field. Come here, puppy. Can we keep him, Mom? Max, the ball. In soccer, you can't use your hands to touch the ball. I've come up with other things to do with my hands so they don't get bored. I wave at the fans. I hide them in my shirt. I play itsy bitsy spider. I feel like I'm forgetting something important. Kick the ball. The ball, Max. 
Something you have to do in soccer. Snack! That's it. I can't believe I almost forgot. You get a snack at the end. Shake hands with the other team first. Good game. Good game. I'm Max. Nice to meet you. Good game. Good game. Good game. Bye, Max. That was fun, coach. Can't wait to kick the ball again next week. Little Owl Snow by Divya Srinivasan A chill cut through the forest. Little Owl fluffed his feathers. Something is happening, he thought. Green leaves turned orange, gold and brown, and then began to fall. Geese flew off to warmer places, navigating by starlight and honking all the way. Dry fallen leaves rustled and crackled as animals scurried, preparing for the cold. Bear was eating all day and into the night. Winter's almost here, Little Owl said. Isn't it exciting? Winter's too cold, Bear shuddered. I'm staying in. Bear sleeps through all the fun, Raccoon whispered. You'll see. Bats disappeared into a cave. Caterpillars closed up their cocoons. Goodbye, Hedgehog called. See you in spring and he wiggled into his warm winter home. Little Owl thought he saw a moth, but it was only a leaf in the wind. The forest felt so empty now. (sighs) The friends were making fog when it happened. Snow! Soon, the forest was blanketed in snow, its crystals glinting in the light. Tracks began to appear. Not everyone was hidden away. Little Owl hopped atop the frozen pond, watching fish swimming underneath. How strange and wonderful it all was. But one night, Little Owl started to miss Hedgehog. Mama, Little Owl asked, how much longer till spring? Snow is like a special secret not everyone can know, Mama said. Are you ready for it to melt away so soon? The forest was very quiet. Little Owl could hear the smallest sounds. Tap, tap. An icicle dripped onto a patch of slush. Mama told Little Owl he would see fireflies again. He would see Hedgehog too, soon enough. Right now though, It was time to enjoy the snow. Eat Pete by Michael Rex. Pete was playing on his bedroom floor when a monster appeared at his window. Hi, said Pete. Do you want to play cars with me? The monster didn't want to play cars with Pete. He wanted to. Eat Pete. But playing cars looked like fun, so they had some races. They set up parking lots. They made crashes. Hey, said Pete, what should we do next? Do you want to play pirates? The monster did not want to play pirates with Pete. He wanted to. Eat Pete. 
but the monster had never played pirates before. They dug for treasure. He walked the plank. They acted like scallywags. Next, said Pete, I think we should play blocks. The monster did not want to play blocks with Pete. He wanted to eat Pete. But he liked building things, so they made a castle. They built towers. They knocked them down. Now, said Pete, we should play superheroes. The monster did not want to play superheroes with Pete. He wanted to eat Pete. So he ate him. The monster piled up some blocks. He put on the pirate hat. He spun the wheels of a car. It wasn't any fun to play alone. He missed Pete. So he spat him out. That was not very nice, Pete told the monster. Sorry. Do you want to play superheroes? asked Pete. The monster did not want to play superheroes with Pete. He wanted to hug Pete. I'm John Cena and today I'm reading my book, Elbow Grease, which is illustrated by Howard McWilliam. First, let's meet the cast of characters. Elbow Grease. Hee <laughs> hee, that tickles. Flash. Come on, Bo, the story's starting. Pinball. Technically, at this point, the story has already started. Tank. What story? And don't forget Crash. Last one there's a hunk of junk! Elbow Grease was the smallest truck in the Demolition Derby, but he never let that bother him. Why should I? His brother Tank was tougher. His brother Flash was faster. His brother Pinball was smarter. His brother Crash was braver. Okay, we get the point. What Elbow Grease had was gumption. You got that right, Buster. He always tried his best. He never, ever gave up. Ouch! Ah! Oops. Ow! At night, Mel the mechanic plugged in elbow grease to charge while the other truck slept outside. Sometimes his brothers teased him for being different. He's got a plug. He's stuck to the wall. He's got a lithium-ion battery, which requires an external power source for daily recharging. <laughs> He's got a plug. Elbow Grease didn't get upset. He was glad to be inside, especially during storms. Have fun in the rain, you jalopies. Then one night, Mel brought home a poster, the Monster Truck Grand Prix, and the reigning champion, Big Wheels McGee. Someday I'm gonna be on a poster. The brothers laughed. You're too slow. You're too small. Your technique and experience are insufficient to compete at a professional level. You're too... Um... Don't hurt yourself, Ted. I made Elbow Grease mad. So mad that he zoomed off to the Grand Prix by himself to prove his brothers wrong. I'll show those jalopies what I can really do. In the morning, Elbow Grease was exhausted. He'd been driving all night without a charge. But when he arrived at the Grand Prix, he felt his circuit surge with excitement. He quietly rolled onto the track and snuck into position behind the monster trucks at the starting line. The race was about to begin. On your mark, Get set, go! The other trucks were bigger. The other trucks were faster. 
The other trucks had more experience and better technique. But Elbow Grease wouldn't quit. Never give up! He fell behind, but he kept on trucking. Oof! He got covered in mud, but he kept on rolling. Yuck! He got bashed and smashed and even caught on fire a little bit. But still, he kept on going. Owie kazowie! Halfway through the race, it started pouring rain. Thunder rumbled, lightning flashed. And all of a sudden, Elbow Grease's engine shut down. His battery was completely dead. Oh, rust buckets. Elbow Grease was stuck. The first time he wondered if his brothers were right. He started to cry. I'm not crying. It's just cold and I'm <laughs> tired. And I'm scared of the look. Crackalaka. Boom shakalaka. The lightning jolted the battery back to life. Elbow Grease barely had enough charge to keep going, but he didn't give up. He didn't give in. No matter what, he would finish this race, even if he came in last. Mel and Elbow Grease's brothers arrived just in time to see him rattle across the finish line and collapse in a heap. The winner's celebration was already over. Ugh. Look, Bo, most trucks couldn't even make it to the finish line. Just then, the winner of the race rolled by. Well, shift my gears and call me Sally. This kid's got gumption. You boys could learn a lot from him. Crash was shocked. Big. Flash was stunned. Wheels? Pinball was intrigued. McGee? Tank was confused. Ooh. Mel knew that Big Wheels McGee was right. If you only stick to what you're good at, you'll never learn anything. So the next time your problem seems too big or too hard. Oops! I'm currently on fire. Ouch! Just remember. A little elbow grease goes a long way. Ah, you can do it, fellas. Hustle up and show me some gumption. The end. What do you mean the end? Haven't you been listening? Never give up, never quit, never say the end. Keep on going, keep on trying. You can do it. Carmela Full of Wishes by Matt De La Pena, illustrated by Christian Robinson. Carmela scootered along the uneven dirt path, watching men stoop to work with their hands, her birthday bracelets jingling and jangling. The thick greenhouse air smelled of marigolds and overturned earth and fresh manure. Carmela knew exactly what manure was but she didn't want to think about that. Not today. Today, she awoke to candles in her pancakes, and her mom sang, Happy Birthday to You, and told her, Go on, Miha, make a wish. But Carmela's wish had already come true. She was finally old enough to go with her big brother. Carmela followed as he cut back onto the street at Freedom Boulevard, past the crowded bus stop and fenced off repair shop, past the old folks' home where two hunched old women waved smiles, past the huge home improvement store where her dad used to stand around weekend mornings waiting for work. Carmela tried to make small talk with her brother as their metal cart rattled. But her brother didn't make small talk back. He didn't want her tagging along. Too bad, she told him with her glare. 
Just outside the laundromat, she picked a lone dandelion growing among the concrete weeds. She pulled a breath and leaned toward the fuzzy white bulb. But just before she could blow, her brother butted in. Did you even make a wish? You're supposed to make a wish. Everyone knows that. Of course I made a wish, she told him. But it was a lie. Carmela didn't know. Carmela helped her brother sort colors one-handed, helped him load the washers one item at a time. While their clothes spun, her imagination turned, each new thought ushered in by a jingle of bracelets. Her brother found the sound annoying and shot her a dirty look. Too bad, she told him with her glare. She jingled her bracelets as she rode up to Miss Maria's vegetable stand. Imagining a machine built into her bedroom wall, one that would spit out anything she could think of, but mostly candies. She jingled her bracelets in line at the locksmith shop. Imagining her mom sleeping in one of those fancy hotel beds she spent all day making for fancy guests. She jingled her bracelets at the bodega down the block from their old apartment building. Imagining her dad getting his papers fixed so he could finally be home. She jingled her bracelets outside the pharmacy, eyeing the shiny new bikes in the window. Her brother stopped in his tracks. Why do you have to be so annoying? She thrummed her bracelets at him and said, It's a free country. The only time she didn't reach for her bracelets was when her brother ducked into his friend's house. Carmela slumped down on the curb, silently imagining all the things she could turn him into. The slimy pink tail of a rat, a cockroach scurrying away from the light, a wheelbarrow full of manure left in the sun. She stared down at the dandelion in her hand. It seemed so much more important now that she knew it was a place to put her wishes. What if she made the wrong choice? Carmela tried to hop a curb on the long trip home, but her tire caught and her handlebars twisted and she went crashing to the concrete. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. But then she saw her dandelion crushed beside the drain. She looked up at her big brother, warm tears rolling down her cheeks. He lifted up her scooter. You okay? She shook her head and pointed. My wish. He took her by the arm and led her back up the block past the laundromat and the flea market, past the greenhouses and the smell of manure, past the overgrown park and across the train tracks. He didn't stop until they made it to an abandoned farmhouse near a cliff overlooking the sea. Close your eyes, he said. Carmela closed them. Now make your wish, he said. Carmela listened to the ocean's hum in the distance. She listened to the squawking birds. She listened to the wind whistling past her ears. Then she opened her eyes. 
she saw hundreds of tiny white spores lifting into the air, floating out toward the far off surf. The sky was full of wishes. Let's go, her brother said. Don't you want to know my wish, she asked. He shook his head. If you tell, it won't come true. She looked back one last time, then took off her bracelets and followed her brother home. We're amazing, one, two, three. This is a picture of Elmo's friend, Julia. Elmo and Julia have played together since they were really little. They like to do lots of the same things. Elmo likes blocks. He builds really tall block towers. He also likes to knock them down. Crash! Julia likes blocks too. She lines them up in a row. Cool wall. Elmo says. Elmo likes to play with his toy cars and trucks. So does Julia. She especially likes spinning the wheels around and around. Elmo and Julia both like playing games on the tablet. Elmo looks at the screen and giggles. Banana begins with the letter Z. He says. Julia laughs. No, it doesn't, she says loudly. Julia goes with Elmo to the playground because they both love to swing. They even made up a swinging song. Swingy swing, swingity swing, they chant. Abby arrives at the playground. Hi, Elmo, says Abby. Who's your friend? This is Julia. Julia, this is Abby, Elmo says. But Julia doesn't look at Abby. Hi, Abby calls loudly. But Julia doesn't answer. Your friend doesn't like me, says Abby sadly. Elmo doesn't think that's true. Elmo says. It's just hard for her to talk when she's swinging. So Abby waits till Julia is done. Hi, Julia, she says again. Can I play with you and Elmo? But Julia just looks down. Abby is confused. Elmo's daddy told Elmo that Julia has autism, Elmo says. So she does things a little differently. Sometimes Elmo talks to Julia using fewer words. And sometimes Elmo says the same thing a few times. Can I play? Abby asks Julia. Can I play? But Julia doesn't look at Abby. Oh, and sometimes Elmo waits a long time for Julia to answer, Elmo adds. So Abby and Elmo wait. Finally, Julia says, play with Abby and Elmo. Sparkle-tastic! Abby says, what should we play? Julia says, spy? I spy. I love that game, Abby says. I spy with my little eye a blue feather. Julia looks around. She quickly spots something, runs over to it, and comes back with the feather. She laughs and flaps her hands around and around. Flapping is what Julia does when she's excited. 
Elmo jumps up and down, and Abby spins in a pirouette. That's what they do when they're excited. You're an expert at I Spy, Julia, Abby says. Julia starts to sing. She has a pretty voice. She sounds loud and happy. Wow, your singing is really pretty, Julia, says Abby. She joins in, but she forgets the words to the song. She asks Elmo what comes next. Elmo thinks, sorry, Elmo doesn't remember. But Julia remembers. She remembers the words to song after song. The three new pals sing together for a long time. So, what should we do next? asks Elmo. Snack, says Julia. Off to Hooper's store. But inside Hooper's store, Julia seems scared. She claps her hands over her ears. What's the matter? asks Abby. Julia has really good ears, Elmo explains. Sometimes she hears noises that Elmo doesn't notice, like the noise the blender makes. She really doesn't like it. Don't worry, guys, says Alan. I'll turn the blender off. Then Julia takes her hands away from her ears. Hot cocoa for me, Abby decides. Hot cocoa for Elmo, too, Elmo says. But now Julia seems worried. She shakes her head back and forth. No hot, she says. Alan thinks for a minute. Cold chocolate milk for you, Julia, he tells her. Thanks, Elmo and Abby say. One, two, three mugs, Julia counts. Yeah, and one, two, three friends, Abby counts, pointing to each of them. The three friends sip their drinks. And one, two, three milk mustaches, counts Elmo giggling. We're all amazing. One, two, three. I'm Danica McKellar, and today I'm gonna read a book I wrote, 10 Magic Butterflies, which is illustrated by Jennifer Bricking. Once upon a time, there were 10 flower friends. Were they always happy? Well, that depends. All day long, they soaked up the sun, talking and laughing and having fun. Ha ha ha, hee hee hee. They loved being flowers, but they couldn't deny that they had a secret desire to fly. They watched every eve as the fairies flew from the moonlit night to the morning dew. Whoosh, wee. Then one starry night, a flower felt brave. She spotted a fairy and started to wave. Said the tiny blue one, fairy up in the sky. You see, I'm a flower, but I want to fly. Huh? Oh. Hello there, my friend. You smile and you sing. Why would you want to be a different thing? I'm tired of being a flower just stuck on the ground. I want new adventures to zoom all around. The fairy shrugged, okay, and she closed her eyes. Time to get ready for a big surprise. With a wave of her hand and a bing bang boo, the fairy said, now you're a butterfly, Blue. One butterfly flew as nine flowers looked on. There were still 10 of them in the sky on the lawn. Said the bossy green one, fairy up in the sky. Hey, make me some wings, cause I wanna fly. With a wave of her hand and a bing bang boo, the fairy said, now you're a butterfly too. Two butterflies flew as eight flowers looked on. There were still 10 of them in the sky on the lawn. 
said the silly orange one. Fairy up in the sky, could I flutter and flip? Will you help me to fly? With a wave of her hand and a bing bang boo, the fairy said, now you're a butterfly too. Three butterflies flew as seven flowers looked on. There were still 10 of them in the sky on the lawn. Next four and six, then five and five, the brand new butterflies felt alive. Bing, bang, boo. Yes, one by one, they filled the sky as the sweet little fairy helped each to fly. The 10 new butterflies flew all night, zooming and swooping. What a sight. Zing, zing, zoom. When morning came and the sun peeked through, their wings were tired and the wind really blew. Whoa, bonk, thud. They watched other flowers soak up the sun as bees and birds kissed them one by one. And then they said, together all 10, we actually want to be flowers again. It was fun to fly, but now we're sad. We really do miss all the things we once had. Sniff, sniff. It wasn't bad when we were flowers. It was so strong and sturdy with lots of powers. We made perfume and cleaned the air, gave plenty of nectar for all to share. I thought you'd change your mind, she cried. The grass is always greener on the other side. Sometimes we wish for different things, to change color or size or even get wings. But big and tall or short and small, being ourselves is best of all. So let's go back to you being you with fairy dust and a bing bang boo. Yippee! Then 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, they floated down to the garden floor. Now seven on the ground and three to go, then three, two, one, zoomed high to low. Was that a dream? Or did they fly? Can flowers end up with wings in the sky? Who knows what happens while we're asleep? Could dogs become horses and bugs become sheep? Nay, bah! Yes, magic surrounds us. It takes many forms, from rainbows and moonlight to tropical storms. Frogs come from tadpoles that swim in the stream, and each night you grow with every dream. So don't be surprised if this story is true and magical butterflies come to see you. You might see one fluttering late, late at night or in your dreams. Sleep tight. All Are Welcome by Alexandra Penfold and Suzanne Kaufman. Pencils sharpened in their case. Bells are ringing. Let's make haste. School's beginning. Dreams to chase. All are welcome here. No matter how you start your day, what you wear when you play, or if you come from far away, all are welcome here. In our classroom safe and sound, fears are lost and hope is found. Raise your hand, we'll go around. All are welcome here. Gather now, let's all take part. We'll play music, we'll make art. We'll share stories from the heart. All are welcome here. Time for lunch, what a spread. A dozen different kinds of bread. Pass it around till everyone's fed. All are welcome here. Open doors, rush outside. We will swing, we will slide. We'll have fun side by side. All are welcome here. We're part of a community. Our strength is our diversity. A shelter from adversity. All are welcome here. We will learn from each other. Special talents we'll uncover. There's a big world to discover. All are welcome here. So much to learn, so much to do. And when the busy day is through, 
can't wait to come back, start anew. All are welcome here. Head for home to get some rest and greet tomorrow ready and fresh. Our time together is the best. All are welcome here. You have a place here. You have a space here. You are welcome here. Milk Goes to School by Terry Border. It was the morning of her first day of school and Milk was feeling just the tiniest bit scared. Don't worry, her dad said. You're la creme de la creme. That means the best of the best. And he gave her a brand new backpack for good luck. At school, Milk walked over to the first kid she saw. I really like your backpack, Cupcake said. Thank you, Milk answered. My dad gave it to me. He said, I'm la creme de la creme. Waffle leaned over to Cupcake and whispered, I think this milk is spoiled. Milk sniffed herself. She didn't think she was spoiled. Please find a seat, everyone, said Miss Pear. Sit by me, Milk said to Cupcake. You're pretty like I am. Yup, she's spoiled, Waffle said to himself. But Milk ignored him. She didn't think she was spoiled at all. Miss Pear asked everyone to draw a picture of their family. Milk asked Carrot, Would you like to share crayons? I don't care at all, Carrot said. Like I said to Salad, let us be friends. Carrot seemed okay. Everyone did a good job, but Milk was really proud of her drawing. Don't you think it looks beautiful? She asked Carrot. Waffle looked at Carrot and said, spoiled. But Milk shook her head. She didn't think she was spoiled. She was just trying to be friendly. Then Miss Pear asked the kids what they wanted to do when they grew up. Cupcake wanted to be an artist. Peanut wanted to be the first astronaut on Mars. Potato wanted to be a sailor on a gravy boat. Milk said that maybe she could be a queen because she liked being the boss. Waffle said, she's so spoiled. You don't seem too sweet yourself, said Milk. Next, the class worked on their spelling. Milk couldn't wait to show the other kids what a good speller she was. So when Milk's paper got splattered, she yelled and stomped her feet. You messed it up, Soup, she said. Waffle turned to Soup and said, she's spoiled. But Milk didn't think she was spoiled. She just like having her paper look pretty is all. Later, in the library, Milk asked if someone cut the cheese. I don't like that saying, said Cheese, but I think someone tooted. Oops, sorry, said Beans. Milk started to leave. I'll curdle if I stay. Spoiled, Waffle mouthed to Beans. You don't seem too sweet yourself said Milk. You're an awful waffle. On the way back to class, Milk followed Waffle and Cupcake in line. Waffle, you are slower than syrup, said Milk. That's not true, said Waffle. Syrup is way back there behind us. Cupcake turned and waved at him. Milk was not happy. She was just trying to be friendly. Back in the classroom, 
they watched a movie that showed baby chicken nuggets hatching. They were so cute. But Egg got worried because he didn't want something to hatch from him. Milk said, don't worry, I think you might be a rotten egg. Look who's talking, answered Egg, and then both of them got in trouble for arguing. They're both spoiled, Waffle said to Cupcake. Milk decided she did not like Waffle. At recess, Milk watched as Apple asked Waffle how they could get some more kids to play tag. Ice cream, yelled Waffle. Really? Apple said. Why would you do that? Ice cream, yelled Waffle. I know, I heard you, said Apple, and it's scaring me. Waffle said, I'm just trying to get ice cream's attention over there. Ice cream, hey, ice cream, would you like to play? Milk wished someone would invite her to play, but she knew what Waffle would say if she asked, and Milk didn't think she was spoiled at all. At the end of recess, Celery lost a raisin, and everyone helped look for it. After a while, Milk admitted she had already thrown it away when she found it sticking to her shoe. She did offer to get him a new one, but Waffle rolled his eyes. Milk wasn't sure if she liked school at all, or if any of the kids liked her. On the way back to class, Milk was too sad to watch where she was going. She didn't notice Banana's peel. She slipped and spilled herself all over the floor. Oh no! Quick, someone bring in some kittens, laughed Egg. I bet we could make some good cottage cheese out of that spoiled milk, laughed Waffle. If we jump up and down, I think we can make that milk shake, laughed Beans. Cupcake was worried and began to cry. Milk might be a little spoiled, but she did ask me to sit by her this morning. And when we drew pictures, she did share her best crayons, said Carrot. Plus, she said she would go to the lunchroom to get me a new raisin, said Celery. And milk does help grow strong teeth and bones, said Barbecue Chicken. Let's not cry over spilled milk, said Miss Pear. We'll mop her up and get her back in her carton in no time. During all of this, while she was just a big puddle, Milk heard her classmates. She was surprised any of them cared about her, especially because maybe she had been acting a little bit, just the tiniest bit, spoiled. But the excitement wasn't over for the day. As soon as Milk was back in her carton and all the kids were back in the classroom, Cupcake got a whiff of Pepper, who was standing nearby, and ah, 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 choo! Cupcake sneezed off her frosting and sprinkles all over Milk and everyone else in the class. Whoops, said Cupcake. Everyone waited for Milk to get steamed, but she didn't yell or stamp her feet. It's okay, Cupcake. It was an accident, said Milk. Now we all look like la creme de la creme. The whole class laughed, even Waffle. I was wrong about you, Waffle said to Milk. You're not too spoiled. That's nice of you to say, said Milk. You actually seem pretty sweet yourself. Come back to read more stories together anytime you'd like, or find more books to read yourself at readbrightly.com. Bye.